This video is an introduction to GWN Cloud, which is the Grandstream cloud-based management platform for GWN access points, routers, and switches. It is a free service offered by Grandstream to GWN users so that they can have a centralized management platform for all the GWN devices deployed across multiple networks and locations. GWN Cloud offers high scalability with support of an unlimited number of GWN devices. It provides a simple, secure, and integrated way to automatically provision GWN devices, simply unbox them, power them on, and plug them into a network with internet access, and GWN Cloud will provision the configuration preset of the device automatically. For that, you need to have the device added to your GWN Cloud account and to have a configuration preset assigned to it. In addition to provisioning, GWN Cloud offers the convenience of managing, monitoring, and troubleshooting GWN access points and routers from one single interface. It also offers many features such as task scheduling, upgrading, notification emails, and much more. GWN Cloud can also be used to have remote access to the Grandstream Managed Switches 7800 series. When you add the GWN 7800 series to your GWN Cloud account, it creates a secure connection for remote access of the switch web interface without the need to configure port forwarding on the physical router or firewall. You can also use the GWN app to have access to your GWN Cloud account. A nice feature that is built into the app is the barcode scanner. So instead of adding devices manually to your GWN Cloud account, you can use the app to scan the printed barcode on the devices using your phone camera. To simplify the management of GWN devices, GWN Cloud allows you to create multiple networks and assign devices to the desired network. So a network inside GWN Cloud could be used to represent a physical network, a client, branch office, geographical location, etc. To delegate the administration of networks, GWN Cloud supports role based administration to allow the super admin to appoint an administrator for a specific network or group of networks and choose whether they have read only access or full access to make configuration changes. Now I will switch to my GWN Cloud account to demonstrate how to navigate the GWN portal. So I will use my login credentials. If you don't have an account already, you can click on sign up to create an account. So when you first log in, you will get this dashboard that offers visibility into devices, clients, bandwidth usage, and any generated alerts. The dashboard will include information regarding the network selected here. So currently I'm using the default network. If I click on it, it's gonna show me the other networks. I have already created other networks like ABC, XYZ, and GS. To create a new network and add it to your GWN Cloud, you simply go to Create Network, assign it a name, choose the region and the time zone. So here under the dashboard, you can see that I have one router and I have a switch that is online, three access points, one of them is online and two are offline. If you need to have access to that switch or all the switches in this network, you simply click on the switch icon. The same thing applies to the router or the AP. So basically when you click on it, it's gonna take you to the devices page. The devices page will show you all the devices that have been added to this network. So in this network, I have five devices, including access points, a router, and a switch. Under the operation column, here I have access to the configuration of the access points. I can simply click on the configure, change the parameters related to that access point, save and apply, and GWN that cloud will push that configuration to the access point. Let me go back here again to devices. For the routers, we have two options. We can use GWN that cloud to generate configuration preset and push it to the router, or we can simply click on the remote access so that it can provide us with access to the web interface of the router so we can make changes from the web interface. As for the switches, GWN 7800 series, GWN Cloud provides you with an icon for remote access, the same thing that we did with the router. So basically when you click on it, it's gonna create a secure connection 
with the switch so that you can have access to the web interface of that specific uh, switch. And this eliminates the, the need to create port forwarding on the firewall or the router. If you need to add devices to your GWN.cloud, just make sure you select the right network, then go to devices, add, you assign it a name. There are two pieces of information required to add any device to your GWN.cloud. The first one is the MAC address and the second one is the password. Both of them are printed in the sticker in the back of the access point. If you have your GWN.cloud installed on your iOS or Android device, you can simply scan the barcode to add the devices to your GWN.cloud. The second option is using the inventory. The inventory page is available under organization. I'm going to show you that in a moment. So here I only have one access point that have not been assigned to any network. So every time you assign a device to a network, it's not going to be available under an inventory. So I can just give this access point a name and then add it to this network. The other option is the import option in case you have many devices and you want to upload them to your GWN.cloud. You can use the reference template that is provided here. You can download it, fill it out with the information, then simply click on add. So the inventory that we just saw is available under inventory. So here, as you can see, I have six devices in total. Five of them have been assigned. So that's why this option is grayed out. And there's only one that has not been assigned to any network. So if you need to assign devices from this configuration page, you just select the device and then click on assign device. You select the network that you would like to assign it to and just give it a name from here. So to manage the SSID that you would assign to either an access point or a router or both of them, we go to settings and then Wi-Fi settings. By default, when you add devices to your GWN.cloud, GWN.cloud will create a default SSID with the name of GWN-Cloud. You can always go here to the settings and disable this SSID. To create a new SSID, we just click on Add SSID. Make sure we enable it. We can give it a name and I can assign a password for this SSID. So next I go to device assignment. Device assignment is where you select the access points or the wireless routers that you would like them to broadcast that SSID. So let's say I'm gonna use this SSID for the router only so I can select the router and, and check the other access point. Then I go ahead, save. So under the SSID settings, we have access to global radio settings. And these settings work as a global template to all the access points that you add to a specific network. If we need to make changes to the Wi-Fi settings of a particular router or an access point, we go to devices, then we select the access point or router and we make changes. If we need to apply changes globally to all the access points and routers, we just go to global radio settings. Then we can go here and make changes and then they will apply automatically to uh, all the access points in this network unless we go to a specific access point or router and make uh, changes to that one. So every time you add an access point, they will be assigned settings from the radio settings. Uh, some of the changes that you can make here are radio power adjustment, channel width uh, for both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. In case you need to enable mesh network on the cloud, you can do that from this page. So in addition to Wi-Fi settings, if we go to LAN, this is where we configure the LAN port on the router. So if we go here, it's gonna show us the default settings. So currently we only have one router and it's using the default LAN with VLAN ID one, which is usually the default VLAN. Let me go back here. If we need to create another VLAN and assign it to that router, we just click on add give it a name, then we can sign it to VLAN tag and enter the rest of the information such as the HCP and the gateway IP address. The internet option allows you to configure the WAN port of the routers. So if you go here, so that gives us information about the current configuration of the WAN port. Some of the options that we can change from here is uh, changing the IP address from DHCP to static, we can enable IPv6, the DNS, DMZ, and UPnP. 
VPN configuration currently is, is not supported from GWN.cloud, but you can go to the router just by going to device here and do your VPN configuration using the web interface of the router. This will be supported in a future version of GWN.cloud. For traffic management of the router, this is where you create your static routes. Static routes uh, essentially allows you to explicitly configure how to route traffic to a specific destination. So looking at this example, we have the GWN 7062 connected to a provider and at the same time it is connected to another GWN 7052 which is also connected to another provider. So if we need to route traffic to the destination 211.108.234.115, what we need to do is just create a static route. So this way, all the traffic going to this destination will go to the GWN7052, which has the IP address 192.168.5.1. Next, we have the firewall and security settings, and one of them is the port forwarding. This applies to the router, so when you try to access uh, specific services from outside the network, you need to configure port forwarding on the router. There's also the option to configure wired firewall rules. So if there's a traffic that you would like to deny or allow, you can set the inbound rules in here just by specifying the source IP address, uh, the protocol type, and the type of service uh, using the port number of that uh, service. So let me go back here. For the wireless firewall rules, this is in case you wanna create a segregated Wi-Fi network uh, this is where you uh, configure the rogue ap and under advanced security settings this is where you enable the sip alg yeah just be cautious when you enable sip alg on the router so if we go under profiles uh, we have a lot of options here yeah uh, one of them is the captive portal we have the mac address configuration like when you decide to whitelist or blacklist a group of MAC addresses. This is where you create the group of MAC addresses. You can adjust the bandwidth rules in a situation where you need to limit the amount of bandwidth dedicated to a specific SSID or an IP address or MAC address. So under organization, uh, if we click on the network list, it's gonna show all the networks managed from this GWN.cloud account. If we need to remove a network from this account, we simply use the delete icon. Or if we need to change the name of the network, we can click on the edit option. We already mentioned inventory. This is where you add your devices. And from here, you can assign them to uh, your available networks. There's the option to upgrade devices from here. You simply select the uh, device that you would like to upgrade, then click on upgrade firmware you can select the firmware version that you would like to upgrade to you can send an immediate command to upgrade the access point or you can schedule that the report section allows the GWN administrator to generate reports regarding the devices included in that specific network so the way that works, you just include a name and I can select the default network and the report content. You can select which options you want that CSV file that GWN.cloud will email to whatever email address we include here. So if I need the bandwidth usage and the client counts, I can select only these two. You can also add other networks. So if I need for these two networks, I can select both of them. I can select also the frequency of the email that will be sent to the receiver. Just keep in mind that the GWN database will keep storage of reports for 30 days. After that, they will be automatically uh, wiped out. So I'm gonna select, for example, daily, the report generator, you can generate it right now, or you can set a time where you want GWN.cloud to generate that report and just include the email address of the receiver, save, and apply the change change log 
these are all the changes that have been made to this profile so here you can have the timestamp when the change was made and what type of change was actually made uh, gwn.cloud also supports api integration just by enabling the api developer mode there is a, a document here that shows you all the commands and the functions supported to create users under the same account so that you can assign them the administration of specific network or group of networks uh, you go to user management and then you add a user so you enter the email address here and then you select the role that you would like to assign to that specific uh, choose the network administrator and then here you can select which network you would like to assign to that specific user so once you enable that GWN.cloud will send an email to that user so that they can create their own password. And once they create their, their own password, they, when they log in, they will only have access to the networks that, that you have assigned to that user. So as you know, Grandstream has a wide range of access points and, and each one of them is built with certain capabilities. So when you go to the wireless configuration of these devices, Sometimes you need to make sure that certain features are actually supported by the models you're currently using. And uh, I just want to share with you here a comparison chart that you can always refer to. So if we click on about, then we go to device comparison. This chart here provides us with, with a summary of all the features that are supported on each model. So if you need, for example, to enable the DFS channels and you have uh, let's say GWN 7600, well, you should know that this model does not support uh, DFS for Europe and DFS for the FCC, which is the United uh, States. So you can always refer to this chart when making changes to your GWN access points. So let me go back here. Under the same page here, it gives you the device model and the minimum firmware version that is supported on GWN.cloud. For example, if you have a GWN 7000 router that runs an old firmware, you're not going to be able to manage that device from GWN.cloud. So you always need to come here and compare the firmware version that you have on your device with the one that is currently supported on GWN.cloud. So when it comes to troubleshooting uh, devices from your GWN.cloud, there are some tools that you can use. So these are the troubleshooting uh, tools integrated into GWN.cloud, which include the uh, ping, trace route, and even packets captures to remotely troubleshoot devices without having to be uh, on site. If we go to Insight and then Site Survey, Site Survey is another useful feature built into GWN.cloud. It is essentially a Wi Fi scanner that helps scan the adjacent wireless networks and display extensive information, including uh, SSID, uh, the BSSID, which is the MAC address of the access point, the channel and the frequency being used, the protocol, the bandwidth, the encryption protocol. So it gives you a lot of information. And one of them also is the RSSI, in case you notice that there is a high level of interference from an adjacent access point. So the site survey that is built into GWN.cloud is very helpful when doing your passive survey of the Wi-Fi signal in a specific area. Next, we go to the client section. This page displays all the clients connected to the network uh, and GWN devices. It will include a list of all connected clients with their related info like connection type, IP address, total bandwidth, as well as the access point to which they are connected to. The difference between clients and guests, guests will display the clients that are connected to the Wi-Fi network using a captive portal. So when you create a captive portal and then you assign it to an SSID and you have users that are connected to that SSID through captive portal, you will find those users under the guest section. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this video guide useful. Don't forget to check our Grandstream YouTube channel for more videos like this. If you follow these troubleshooting steps and still are experiencing issues, Grandstream Networks has a support team dedicated to assisting you with any issues you may have with our product. You can access Grandstream support by going to helpdesk 
that's grandstream.com.